I'd like to thank Orbis International for giving me the opportunity to uh, present to you today the International Classification of ROP 3rd Edition. I'm Paul Chan. I'm the chair of the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Illinois Eye and Infirmary, University of Illinois at Chicago. I also serve as the chair for the ROP Committee for IPOS, uh, the International Pediatric Ophthalmology Astrophysmus Council. I want to thank the Knights Templar Eye Foundation and IPOS for their generous support uh, for bringing us all together uh, for this update. And first and foremost, I want to thank the incredible group of people who came together from around the world uh, to bring us this iCrop third edition. Really phenomenal. Let's look back uh, and almost 30 years ago in 1984 with the original iCrop uh, bringing us zone stage plus disease and then uh, retinal detachment classification in 1987. And then in, in 2005, uh, discussion around aggressive posterior ROP, pre-plus disease, and regression of ROP. Now, 16 years later, or uh, actually 15 uh, years later, bringing together this group to discuss um, an updated classification. So why now? Well, over the years, uh, there's been a lot of progress and there's been an evolution around treatment and also diagnosis, uh, especially with the advent of anti-VEGF therapy, which is uh, being used around the world in addition to laser, and also the many uh, new imaging techniques, uh, such as OCT, OCTA, fluorescein angiography, and of course, uh, digital imaging that is being widely used. Uh, there's also been a lot that we've learned around uh, aggressive posterior ROP and, and showing that there can be discrepancies around the disease based on expert diagnosis. In addition, uh, APROP uh, may look different in different populations, right? So in resource limited areas, uh, heavier and older babies may develop an aggressive type of disease that may not necessarily be so posterior. Our understanding of plus disease has also evolved uh, with the advent of artificial intelligence algorithms, in addition to just our understanding around what plus disease is. And I think there's an important discussion around this as well. Very importantly, uh, the need to discuss what is reactivation, what is recurrence, um, as well as regression of disease, especially with the use of anti-VEGF. When you look back uh, at the literature uh, and you see the reports around reactivation, especially after anti-VEGF treatment, um, many people have uh, presented different definitions. And I think it's important going forward, especially for the management of children, um, to have some consensus or definitions around reactivation of disease. So around 2019, the group came together. Uh, the group was chaired by Dr. Michael Chang, who's now director of the National Eye Institute. I had uh, excellent uh, international representation, 34 ophthalmologists from six continents, 20 retina, 14 pediatric ophthalmology, 22 male and 12 female. And these are the, the main topics uh, that we discussed and worked through, APROP and AROP, ROP regression, reactivation, uh, discussion around stage five disease, uh, persisting vascular retina and vascular anomalies, uh, the description around the posterior zone two and a notch, and of course, very importantly, plus disease. When thinking about aggressive posterior ROP as we had originally described, um, this would typically affect the smallest and most premature infants. But as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can see aggressive disease in older and heavier babies in certain areas of the world. And so we uh, agreed on calling this aggressive ROP uh, with the diagnostic features being the tempo of disease, the appearance of the vascular abnormalities, and not specifically uh, tying this to location of disease. Reactivation, very importantly, uh, which can occur uh, with laser and also with anti-VEGF, um, but has become um, sort of put in the forefront with the use of anti-VEGF therapy. Uh, how do we describe it as recurrent vascular dilation and tortuosity and the presence of extra retinal new vessels? And you can see here the descriptions around it. Stage four, stage five classification, uh, what is new in this update? 
uh, is the uh, separation of stage five into three, five A, five B, and five C. And this may have utility as we think through uh, clinical trials going forward for surgical outcomes. Persistent avascular retina uh, and vascular anomalies can occur with or without treatment. Um, and it, it's very important to describe this uh, and to document it. Uh, avascular retina you know, can be prone to retinal thinning, lattice-like changes, and may be associated with retinal detachments later in life. And I think as many of the colleagues um, and partners in, in, in our field have described, after anti-VEGF therapy, you can develop some avascular anomalies uh, in the periphery uh, after anti-VEGF treatment. Also presented is the discussion around documenting posterior zone two. So you can see this new diagram that's uh, now being published uh, describing what posterior zone two is. Uh, describing the notch. So if, for example, you have zone one secondary to a notch, uh, you should document that. Uh, and also recognition of PLUS disease and pre-PLUS as a continuum you know, spectrum disease. Um, regarding the notch, you can see here, uh, describes an incursion by the ROP lesion of one to two clock hours along the horizontal meridian into a more posterior zone than the remainder of the retinopathy. And if that's the case, then you would document this is secondary to notch. Plus disease, very importantly, uh, we've often described it as just plus or no plus, and then in 2005 is pre-plus. Um, here, we're acknowledging that it is a spectrum disease uh, and that it's determined from the vessels within zone one. Um, also, uh, a discussion around uh, the vascular engorgement of the iris, poor pupillary dilation, poor peripheral uh, peripheral retinal vascular engorgement, vitreous haze, and so forth, not necessarily needed for plus disease diagnosis. So in summary, uh, this is what is, I think, most relevant and new to this update, uh, the discussion around APROP and AROP, um, details uh, regarding regression and reactivation of disease, uh, further categorization of stage five ROP, uh, descriptions around pers persisting avascular retina and vascular anomalies, um, acknowledgement of the notch um, and describing the notch and posterior zone two, and of course, very importantly, the plus disease spectrum. If you're interested in uh, reading the paper, you can scan this QR code here uh, and you can download the paper. It's open access. There's also a very nice editorial by Dr. Michael Repka which I think is, is very relevant and would be good to read as well. Uh, so thank you for your attention. And again, I appreciate the opportunity by Orbis International to present uh, the updates to the international, international classification for ROP. Thank you.